thereabouts. Okay? Again, thanks so much for coming. Now it's my pleasure to introduce this evening's guest, Mike Rawlings, the 61st mayor of Dallas. A native of Borger, a graduate of Boston College. Mr. Rawlings was first elected to lead the state's third largest and the nation's ninth largest city in 2011 and was reelected in 2015. This is his, the first and only elective office of his career, though he's no stranger to public service. He previously served as chair of the Dallas Convention and Visitors Bureau, as the city's homeless czar, and as the president of its park board. His more than 30 years in the private sector includes stints as the CEO of Pizza Hut, CEO of the Tracy Locke Ad Agency, and as president and managing partner of a private equity firm. Over the years, I've had several opportunities to sit across from the mayor on a stage like this one, and I can tell you there's never a bad time or a boring time to do it, though this is an especially good and interesting time. Big city mayors are the it boys and it girls of politics at the moment, particularly in Texas. For more than a year, a defining narrative in our public space has been the roiling tension between municipalities and the state, between mayors and the governor and lieutenant governor and some state lawmakers. A parallel narrative is playing out at the federal level with municipalities and the federal government butting heads, most recently at what sounds like a delightful visit by a delegation of the U.S. Conference of Mayors to the White House a couple of weeks ago. We'll talk about that tonight. In both cases, the key element of the narrative is the same, the fight over local control who gets to make decisions about things like sanctuary cities, bathroom access, property tax rates, climate change, ride hailing, bag bans, tree removals, and the like. Here at NDC, Mayor Rawlings, true to form, has not been shy about pushing back the hardest and the loudest against what he sees as an assault on the old Jeffersonian idea that the government closest to the people serves the people best. We're grateful to the mayor for making time for us tonight. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Mike Rawlings. Oh, great. Thank you, Mayor. I bring you water. Yeah, that's great. Please. I'm not easily bribed, but I appreciate the water. That's good. I thought you would want it. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> mayor, thanks so much for being here. Um, the, the, the last time we were together was in Austin in September for mm -hmm. the Tribune Festival, and I asked you then a question do you on like, that. Do you like my attire? Yes. <laughs> I, that, now, by the way, I got tricked. They said this was going to be all students. So well, I did, there's some which, students right here. I know, but then there's like grown-ups and everything, and I, I didn't wear my grown-up stuff. I, I, I only come in one flavor. This is the flavor. I appreciate the fact that Sorry. you thought this. Um, Mayor, the last time we were together, I asked you a question. I'm going to ask you a version of it again tonight, and, and that is whether <coughs> the job that you have now is the job you expected to have? Is it what you thought it would be? You've now been in this job for six and a half years. You're, you're rounding third, as it were, in this job. So you've got plenty of time in the job to have reflected on the work you're doing and whether it was what you intended to do, whether it's what you expected to be doing. Is it? Well, I had no expectations. Right. Um, so I can't say it matched it or not. Right. Uh, um, um, that one's a hard one for me. Um, because it's like nothing else I've ever done. Um, and it's, we could spend a long time on the nature of the job itself. Well, no, I want to spend some time at least, because okay. honestly, you've been the CEO of major corporation, yeah. at least one major corporation. Yeah. You've run businesses. You've been a chief executive. A lot of people who come into the mayor's office have not been chief executives. They've not run things. Yeah. You came into the job theoretically with both the experience and the skills yeah. to do a job like this. Well, the... The, the issue is not only being a mayor, but a mayor in a city manager form of government, too. Right. Okay? So I realized that nobody, I can't fire anybody. Right. <laughs> I, you know, Amazon's, we're one of 20 cities Amazon's what? Oh, now. we'll get okay. there, I promise. And, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. And next. I realized yeah. no one reports to me, okay? Right. And I'm trying to kind of get this thing going. Well, and you have power, but Mr. Mayor, you have power. I mean, I don't, no, no, I'm not. I'm not whining. You're I'm not. Just you're saying, not a carnival barker. I mean, you actually have the ability yeah. at some. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm not. But but yeah. in business, you're you're an inch wide and a mile deep. 
You know right. everything about your company. Right. You know every customer proposition, every competition. Yeah. You you are an authority on that business. You better be, or yeah. you shouldn't be the CEO. In being mayor, you're uh, a mile wide, an inch deep. Yeah. Because you've got so many different issues, you do have to surround yourself with people that are, have experts on that. Yeah. Now, is it what I intended to do? Yeah. Yes. Right. That's a good question for me. I look back and I'm, I'm saying, this is kind of what I wanted to do. Yeah. This is what I, I wanted to kind of focus on Southern Dallas. Right. Uh, I wanted to make sure we keep business, thank you, uh, business alive in Dallas, inclusive growth, deal with issues that the, between the haves and the have-nots, yep. uh, deal with education has, was a real hot button with me and I've made some enemies uh, over the years about that. But, but I'm focused on education. And, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of go to sleep and say, all right, this is kind of what my, on my uh, uh, to-do list was yeah. there. But to the question of what you can and cannot actually do, yeah. in terms of what the job allows you to actually do and not do, are you frustrated on that long list of agenda items that you came in thinking you wanted to work on and that you've worked on to some degree that you can't move to exactly the place you want, or that you can't move it, it, as quickly I, it, as you want as you might have. If, if you were a CEO, there's an opportunity to be an autocrat if you choose yeah. to be. You could be a benevolent autocrat, but you have a lot more power to act unilaterally. And in this job, as you're saying, you don't really have that same power. Yeah, no question. Yeah. So it's more the speed in which you do it. I'm, I'm a right. bit impatient person. Right. Let's talk about education for a second. Yeah. Uh, I believe, uh, like any organization, any entity, the fish stinks from the head, okay? Right. And, and it's all about governance, whether it's a public company, yeah. whether it's a city, whether it's the federal government, whether it's a, uh, the, how the schools are run, all yeah. right? And so to me, having the optimal governance system is important. I can advocate, we've got a hell of a good school board uh, right now, Miguel Solis is here, thank God Miguel's there. Right. Uh, you know, and we've got, but I mean, we're this close to going back the other way constantly. Yeah. So I'm having to kind of beg and borrow and, and convince people, cajole them. Yeah. And in and, and, and business, you don't do that. And one of the challenges I have to believe, Mayor, is that even if you had within the confines of your job the ability to move as quickly as you wanted to or to hire and fire, at the end of the day, your fate is still determined by things out of your control. Right? But, but I mean, that's the way life is. Well, well right. Okay. But, but again, the, the, the state, just to pick one thing I've already named and I want to spend some time talking about tonight, how the state litigates some of the issues that you've mentioned does have a material impact it on does. your ability. No question. Best intentions. But that's a good that. example of yeah. another stakeholder that you right. have to deal with. I said this in, in my private sector about 15 years ago. Right. I said leadership is getting people to do something if you don't pay them to do it. Okay. Yeah. Because when you pay somebody, they got to kind of do it. Right. You, you stop paying them. Transactional. And I realize right. it has come back to haunt me that that's the real act right. of leadership. Here. Right. There and was some, when, and how do you lead the state? Well, there was how some, do you lead the governor? There are, there are people who would say that in every city government, this one and others, that people have been paid to do things for some time. <laughs> you just haven't seen it. <laughs> that's right. Right. But you, you have a more idealistic view of government, and that's, and that's appropriate because you, I mean, it's, it's the power exactly. of persuasion. The mayor, ha whatever other powers the mayor does not have, you have the powers of persuasion. How self aware are you about your weaknesses as a mayor? What's the worst part about you as mayor? That I lose my temper, okay, yeah. privately. Not publicly, I don't throw anybody under the bus publicly, but at times I, I just can't believe some of the stuff that happens. And I yeah. just, I get very, um, um, I get very distraught about that. And then I have a cocktail and then I move on. Then you're good. Yeah. <laughs> have you made, mista have you made uh, mistakes that you are aware of, have acknowledged, can identify, and that you've attempted to correct during the time that you've been mayor? Yes, but they usually have to do with not working hard enough on certain issues, okay? Yeah. Um, uh, like you said, there's a lot that's not in my control. Right. And so you have to, uh, what is that old prayer about knowing what you can control yeah. and what you can't. And, yeah. And I, um, I don't look back, and I'm not trying to dodge your question, but there's not something obvious. Some people would say I made mistakes at times, but in fact, I 
knew that that was probably going to happen, and I powered through. You the, chose I, to go I, down. I chose. Yeah. I consciously chose to do them. Right. Um, you know, on on different issues, um, but uh, I wasn't aware of some things that it was. I was a little naive about. Give me an, give, give us an example of something. Be specific. Um, you know, a lot of it's around management. We've been, we've gone, since I've been here, we've had three city managers, three city attorneys. These people are very important. They are the chief executive. What the mayor is in Dallas is like being an executive chairman of a board. Right. Okay. And in, for a business community, there's the chairman of the board, but an executive chairman is kind of a full time coach yep. and active on a board. And, and they kind of pull, the, they're the lead director and they pull, the, and that's kind of what you are as a mayor. And, but the, the city manager is really the CEO. Right. So coalescing 14 other people around managing those people is a tricky proposition. Do you consider the fact that you've had three city managers and three county attorneys, three city attorneys, pardon uh -huh. me? in six and a half years to be a failure on your part? Did you do something wrong? I think so. What was it? Yeah, I, I think that I was not cognizant of how the council uh, was really coalescing yep. earlier in my, in my uh, time. Yep. And I would have uh, uh, made some different decisions. I don't trade, I don't trade votes, Evan, so that's probably a, another mistake. Yeah. I don't go, hey, if you vote for me, I'm gonna vote for you, because I just say, people have gotta be free, and, and I'm gonna advocate in the right way. Yeah. And I'm going to say this is what I believe, but sometimes people don't believe that. And, and you could argue that I'm not a successful politician because of that. Yeah, but I think two different people would view that differently. I think you, know, you could say losing on principle is, is bad mayoring, but it's also it's like a good thing. If you're going to lose, I'll you may as well this, lose on principle. I'll tell you this. What I've learned about right. this thing, whether it's federal government, yep. at the state level, the city, is you better be clear about your North Star. Yep. You've got to be clear about how you feel and, and where you are from a political spectrum standpoint yeah. and how you take all this in. Because if you're not, you're gonna be whipped against the rocks of this political ocean. I, I wanna talk about the state. I think this is a good transition to talk about whether the people at the state level who have some responsibility for you and purview over you that they've started to assert more and more have a North Star themselves. But articulate like the, the elevator speech, what are your core principles as mayor for this city and for the way that you lead it? I'm a radical centrist. A radical centrist. Right. And what I mean by that is, I first of all, is I believe in Aristotle's premise that virtue is the means between two vices. And that's the way it was in Aristotle's days yeah. and it is today. Right. Second is I believe that history must be progressive but it is best done by bringing everybody along, not just a few, yeah. okay? And second is I'm, pa I'm radical because I passionately believe about principles that, that different people on different sides hold near and dear, and I hold them just as near and dear, okay? Right. Um, I believe why I'm here on this earth, in, in this mayor's position, is to give every citizen of Dallas, Texas, the opportunity for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, mm -hmm. okay? That's what we're called to do, and my job is to get every person to have life, liberty, not this group or that group. On the other hand, I am passionate about balancing budgets, trying to be more efficient in government, and really uh, uh, doing the right thing for the long term financially. Uh, it isn't being a centrist these days a hard place no, to I'm be not politically? A well, you said I'm a radi radical centrist. A radical centrist. It's a big, big, big difference. difference. Well, whatever, wh whether your centrism is radical or not, isn't, <laughs> isn't, isn't being a centrist a hard place to be a lonely place today in politics where the, really the center has disappeared, or at least the center has been redefined on both I sides so, that it's, the so that it's pushed up? I'll tell you this. I bet if I looked at this group and yeah. I ask them, are you a left winger, right winger, or a centrist? I bet the lion's share of these people here would not. We haven't been able to articulate it well right. as politicians because of the primary system and everybody runs the basis and the centrists don't vote in the primary system, okay? Right. 
they they said, well, I'll vote, I'll vote in November. But the By then it's already the, done. The choices they're presented in November don't really. Re they're, so they're so the problem is the that that the people are. Our needs, needs to be changed. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you, okay. Okay. So do you? Do, do, do you have a way to fix gerrymandering? Because the problem with gerrymandering, in a nutshell, and it was the way when Democrats ran the state, course, it's the way Republicans run the state now, is the people in power use the gerrymandering system to remain in power. In order for the system to change, the people in power have to give up the means that they enable, or, or that they're handed to stay in power. Yeah, I, I How think do you change it? the only two ways to change it is, is through the court system, one, and through hiring and, and, and electing people yeah. that would be in Kennedy's profiles and courage. People that believe in, in doing the right thing for a city, state, and government first, right. and not the party. Co I country mean, country McCain, over country John over party. John McCain right, yeah. had, I mean, you know what? Right. I mean, when he nominated Sarah Palin as vice president, it was like, what is he doing, okay? For me, yeah. okay? I'm gonna tell you, I am, I'm the biggest John McCain fan now, and I'm not, don't buy some of his politics, but he's trying to do, make that happen. And so you don't country see that. over party, community over ideology, yeah. that's the way, that's, that's the way, no that's question. the way forward. Do you see much of that at the state level? We have leadership at the state level who over the last year plus have really begun to uh, kind of rag on you guys who run the big cities. It's a larger conversation than simply the cities versus the state. But I, I, I want your, frank assessment of the people who run the state right now, whether you think they're doing a good job or a bad job for us as a community. Well, Joe Strauss is the most uh, valuable player in the state this last time. I right. mean, he, he helped us uh, stave off a terrible, terrible uh, yeah. um, situation. Uh, he's still there, so I got to say he's still there. I know right. he's leaving. But he's on, but he's on okay. the way out. So you, yeah. you, you believe this idea, you saw it with your own eyes, that he was essentially the bulwark. He was the last no guy question. standing. No question. Right, pushing He back was Davy Crockett at the Alamo, baby. Right. Yeah. Okay, and he went down, didn't right. he? Yeah. Do you do you okay. worry what will happen after he leaves? I do. Yeah. I do. And and uh, um, look, I just call on the best, uh, whether it's the governor, um, and the governor and I have a pretty good dialogue on things, and we try to find uh, a common ground. Uh, but I try to call on him for the better. A uh, uh, state for, of, of Texas. I mean, yeah. what Texas needs to be. We've got to educate our kids, okay? We've got to get uh, around and build that for the long term. We, we need to focus on continued economic development, okay? Mm -hmm. We've got to deal with health care. Those things are basic Maslowian, uh, Maslowian uh, uh, hierarchy mm -hmm. of needs. But has this governor or this state government dealt with any of the three things you just mentioned? Not yet. From an economic development standpoint, what we see is less of a willingness rather than more to provide incentives to yeah. attract business. They won't do anything about health care. They've done nothing about school finance, even though the court system has told them that it's on the verge of being unconstitutional. I'm just trying to see where they connect. I, I, I give him a little bit higher grades on economic development than you probably do. You do. If you, if you, if you, didn't, if you took the bathroom bill out, if you put the bathroom bill in, uh, it's terrible for economic devel uh, right. uh, development. Um, on, I haven't seen the work on on uh, on economic uh, education. I am a Mike Morath fan. Okay, right. former school board member former here. Former school board uh, here. Now and commissioner of education, right? Yeah. Is terrible. Uh, uh, mental health. What a huge issue we have in our state and our country. Right. On mental health, to deal with homelessness, people that are uh, killing one another, the the pain and suffering, killing themselves, suicide right. rates. We've got to deal with mental health, and that's, those are gnarly issues. But and they're kind of soft issues. But that's where I'm a radical centrist. It's right. like we can't be soft on those things. We I, have to be I, radical about. I them. know that you spent time, Mayor, in Austin during the last legislative session, making your case to the governor, making your case to members of your delegation, but to the legislature in the main. In the main, do you think that they're receptive to someone like you when you come down and you say, "Listen." on the ground in Dallas, I see how the issues that you guys are discussing affect people's lives every day. They're, they're very nice to me, but no. But they don't listen. <laughs> and, and, wh and why is that? The theory, the theory of government is that it ought to be bottom up as opposed to top down. It sounds like it's being run top down as opposed to bottom up. Yeah, I think it's been run by the parties, okay? And a good governor, I mean, look, Governor Bush worked hand in glove Okay, with Bob Bullock, and Democratic cities, and, and, and the right, cities, yeah. and and 
look, it, it's, it's about management 101, about how organizations work. You need a governor, you need a legislative group, you need mayors, but they've got to all play their role in the team. And when you just put one off to the sidelines and you play with only two, okay, yeah. you're not going to succeed. But the theory of this, as articulated by the lieutenant governor, is that the problem with Texas right now is, as he describes it, Democrat mayors in the big cities are not playing by the same uh, uh, set of rules that the conservative leadership of the state that's good for economic development, that's good for the future growth of the state, that attracts people to live here. He puts this back, <laughs> but, you, but you know I'm telling you something you've heard. He puts so, this, so he puts this back on all of you. Evan, Evan, yeah. okay, let's just start with the premise of what you just said. Yeah. The problem with the state of Texas, let's just start with that. I'm gonna tell you, I will have a hundred different mayors yep. die to be the mayor of Dallas, Texas. Yep. Okay? Yep. We, are, we created more jobs than anybody in the nation, okay? We, we have, have put more parks and, and quality of life issues and arts. Yep. Uh, I, I, was a, I was given the award for Arts Mayor of the Year by the National Arts da da da, whatever it was. <laughs> and, and it wasn't because of me. It was because of what, I say, the problem, what problem we got, yeah. okay? Yeah. Why are we dancing with who brung you, okay? Yeah. Why, why are we, I'm, I'm into change. I, I like change. If it's, not fit, if it's broken, we need to fix, fix it, it. Right. and I got it. But I'm trying to figure out the problem, and I've argued with this with several people. That's not the premise. The, the premise is well, we might end up to be like Newark. If or, we let or, you or go, California, or, or California, God okay, right, yeah. we might. Go, and I said, well, first of all, you know, let's talk about it when we start, you know, slowing up our growth, okay. Um, uh, second of all, you know, this is not about the future of the state. This is about being reelected. Okay? This is all about politics, and it's all about politics. It's all about gerrymandering, right. and it's all about. I want to be in control and I want to keep my base going. Okay. The problem is the base is changing right before their eyes. So you think, really they, you think they're seeing the base change? I think they are. I think this whole issue on, on 635 in the east, okay? I don't know if anybody lives in Lake Highlands or Garland or, or Mesquite or that area. And we've got, we can fly to, to uh, DFW from, from northwest Dallas. But if you're on the east side, you know, one or two people are getting killed every month. Everybody's in constant traffic jams, and nothing's happening because we're playing to this premise that the Tea Party created about no toll roads. Which, by the way, you could argue, well, should we have toll roads or not? That's not what we're talking about doing. Yeah. You know, we're t talking about doing what the West is, uh, the West part. And so everybody's saying we need to do something. We're going to do it, but nothing's really happening. It's a, it's a really interesting. Right before their eyes. That voting base is saying, why are we being ideologues? Yeah. And why don't we figure out a pragmatic solution? Going too far. I want to ask you about two things specifically that were big flashpoints in this last session that directly affect the city of Dallas, residents you serve. One of them is property tax reform. This was a conversation that happened first during the regular and then during the special session where members of the legislature were trying to pass a law that would limit the ability of local officials to raise property tax revenue above a certain percentage without the consent of the voters. And they couldn't come to an agreement, House and Senate, on what those percentages were. So what happens after the session's over, the governor swoops in during his reelection campaign and proposes the same <coughs> type of policy, but at a much lower threshold, two and a half percent. So what he's saying is, the state should constrain the city of Dallas from raising property taxes property tax revenue above a certain percentage without two-thirds of the residents of, of, uh, of the city uh, uh, saying that they're good with it. Uh, on, and, on, uh, in principle, that sounds like simply the will of the voters, which is part of the democratic system. What's the will of two-thirds what's, what's wrong with that, though? Is it the two-thirds number? Is that what the well, problem is? That, let's start with that. Right. Th that's not a majority. Yeah. It's, it's um, you know, some super majority that is created, and I don't think that's the way we run our democracy. So that's okay? first problem. That, that's first problem. Second problem is I've got no problem with limiting the, the growth of this, and, and I think during run-ups you see that. The problem is when you have the dips and you, you, you've got to make up that revenue quicker, uh, you're never going to make it up with that sort of ceiling. Um, so to me, I would prefer 
uh, let's say a 5% cap, and it's a rolling number over a four or five year period. So an, an average. An average. So, so guys, we don't want to be constantly you right. know, doing this. Let's manage it and soften the curve. Right. And that's the way business would do it. You, they would hedge their oil prices right. in, in a way as opposed to just kind of being very firm. You, you'll you'll agree price. that nobody wants to pay property taxes. Nobody no, likes to no, pay property taxes. No problem. Taxes, no right? question. But I just saw, literally, it is third or fourth in the list of complaints uh, in the city of Dallas. It is not the, the It is not the, the absolute. And it's funny, yeah. I, I, I say to these individuals, I say, Tell, show me the research that property tax increases are the biggest issue in this state. And they go, we get these calls all the time, okay? Yeah. From their base, all right? And to be reelected, I need to do that. And, and so it's a political issue, again, it's not a pragmatic one. Now, yeah. do I want it lower? Yes, and, and I think we need to be much more efficient. I wish the governor would help us with ways to, to do best practices to take cost out of the, uh, out of the, 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 uh, the governments we've got. Right. Because I think we still have an, an antiquated way of doing city government, and I think we can do it better. Right. More importantly, think about the way government is set up in the state of Texas. We've got, we've got the city, we've got the county, we've got the school district, we've got, before that, uh, before last time, we had the Dallas County Schools that ran a bus system. You got five or six different <coughs> things right. that suddenly, that in, a, in business, that wouldn't happen. You would have some M&A activity and yep. you would figure out where the synergies are and take out uh, some of the so, costs. So you're saying that from a political standpoint, this is more of a primary issue than a substantive issue. It's a problem or a solution in search of a yeah, problem. Yeah, I'll tell you, the other issue yeah. I got with his proposal yeah. is he had two thirds have to pass in a bond election. Right. All right, so we passed overwhelmingly a new billion dollar bond for, to repair streets, yeah. to uh, give us the, um, uh, the libraries and the parks we need, uh, repair Fair Park, uh, all the stuff that I think citizens have been clamoring for for a long time, but it did not pass by two thirds. Two thirds is too big a threshold to get over. It's not going to happen. Right. So let's just let's not kid ourselves yeah. and just say we won't have any more bond elections if, if that happens. Uh, Mayor, the, the, a number of other mayors have said that if this pl plan goes through, or even if the plan proposed by the legislature at a higher percentage, closer to your five percent, mm -hmm. goes through. The problem is that the state has largely gotten out of the business of pub funding public education to the degree that they used to, and that has now been pushed down onto local uh, yeah. residents. Um, healthcare costs, uh, borne by the county hospitals, say, when people with no health insurance go to be treated for- Taxes. Right, it's it all get, comes back. Yeah. I mean, if, if you limit your ability to raise property tax revenue, won't that, con other mayors will say, and I wanna ask you if you feel the same way, won't it constrain your ability to provide basic services that the state is either not providing yeah. or got out of the of business course. of providing. Uh, I, uh, that's the easy one, that everybody in this, in this, the citizens of Dallas will have less city services. Yeah. There's no question about it, right. okay? Yeah. Now it's sort of like we're just gonna strangle this baby, you know, and, and, and make sure that it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't able to eat too much, okay? Yeah. And it's like, okay, but remember, things are going good now. Right. Why do you want to take your racehorse and put him in shackles. I, I just don't get that. In my business, right. when I had a business unit or, or a performer, I, I put more money I, I behind those people and those business units and grow it faster and better. Right. And there might be a time that I kind of pull it back, but that's not the way and you And this run is not things. that time not, now. Not, right. You keep it the pedal to the metal right, right. now. The, the other big issue that came up, of course, famously during the legislative session that affects this community and other communities was sanctuary cities, and that is now being litigated. Dallas was a lead actor in, the, in that litigation. You still think that was the right decision? Oh, no question, because, right. I mean, remember, that law said that they could arrest me for speaking out against it. Okay? Correct, yes. You'd be remo I, removed from office. I could works, be right. removed from office right. for speaking out against the law. Right. Are we really doing that? Did, did people actually vote for that in our legislature? It, yeah. it kind of, it, now, on the whole issue of sanctuary cities. Um, now I wanna ask you if you think there's a public safety problem that needs to be solved, because that is the premise behind this legislation. Well, of course, public safety is the number one thing all mayors deal with, right. okay? It is, it, it should be number one, number two, and number three, all right? 
um, and we are bringing crime down continually last for the last 20 years. Yeah. Uh, the, we choose to be a very inclusive city, uh, politically, and the things I say. Therefore, I, we get this moniker of being a sanctuary city. I cannot find a definition for sanctuary city at the state level or the government, or the federal government level, but it gets close to where you need to obey the federal laws, which we do. We have never gone against federal law, and right. we won't go against federal law. And you law. believe that the policy of the city ought to be to cooperate with federal immigration detainers and all? And, well, and, that, and that's that. called the rule of law, right. okay? Right. And there's some other mayors that would probably disagree that they need to do civil disobedience. But your perspective on it is yes, rule okay, of law. Okay, well, that's not a huge issue right now. And by the way, I, I told, I've told Homeland Security, I want bad guys gone, okay? Yep. If they're beating up women, if they're, if they're um, uh, you know, killing people, uh, they should not be in our country. Grab them and get them out of here, yep. okay? And I got no problem with that. That's not the issue. The issue is the dreamers. The issue is uh, these other folks. And again, once again, it's po po politics. I'll tell you, I, fi I found out an, a new thing. I've learned so much being mayor that people love phrases, and it, they they polarize, and they can get on the right side. And a good example on the right side is the term sanctuary city. Okay, and it's like they're a sanctuary city. And now suddenly everybody's scared and like, what do I do? I, I didn't know I was. And you know, you're just very confused. <laughs> On the left hand side, it's gentrification. Okay? Ooh, nobody wants to gentrify anybody. But you look at Brookings Institute and you understand what gentrification really means and how it brings growth and to the community and how you bring it up. But we've got to be very careful as possible. Words matter. And I I'll tell you, we know that better than anything with our president right now. I think gentrification okay? may be as controversial as sanctuary city. In it some is, ways. it is, it is. So you have to say, let's define exactly what those things mean. Right. Okay. And now let's have a policy discussion. Yeah. Right. Let's not try to just create these loaded words and throw them at each other. Yeah. Court comes back and says that that sanctuary city's law passed by the legislature can be implemented. You're good with it. You guys go forward. Well, what am I, what are my choices? Yeah. Rule, I just rule, told you nobody rule, reports to me. Rule, oh, well, right, okay. <laughs> right, I went, can quit. You went to a slightly different place than I thought. Okay, okay. That's, yeah. Um, you mentioned Amazon earlier. You are one of 20 finalist mm -hmm. cities uh, to get the second Amazon headquarters. When we spent uh, time together in September, you had just put in the bid. I asked you, give us details on what the city is prepared to do. You said there'll be a time to talk about what the city's prepared to do. Now you're down to 20. Is this the time to tell us? what the city is prepared to do. There is a time to, to do that, and now is not the time. Is it gonna be after you get the deal? What are you hiding? <laughs> I mean, you know, look, you, you know that, that the idea of the city ponying up all kinds of bonbons and carrots and, mm -hmm. and, and such, understanding that there is a, a prospect of a significant return on that investment, nonetheless is controversial in some quarters. In some quarters it is. Yeah. Now, I, this is what uh, the governor and I do agree with. The governor said he's all in. He wants to make it happen, and so do I. Yeah. Uh, we are not going to do anything stupid financially, and have not done. Define that. stupid in the context of this. Uh, give away the farm. Okay. We're just we're we've got simple algorithms that know the type of returns we're going to get uh, on things, and most importantly, how it's going to help the community. Yeah. All right. Uh, if I'm a, running a company. Uh, and I decide to come to a place, I not only want to do something that's good for me, I want to do it for the community as well, yeah. okay? I think that's logical. So I think we're looking at ways to best do that. Uh, will there be financial incentives offered to a company that is among the largest in the world and probably doesn't need your money in order to get them to come here? Will well, you take that, financial that, that, incentives? That's an interesting premise that they don't need our money to well, do the, what? Well, the, you know, the I people- I mean, they want money all the time. Everybody, they want more people to buy more expensive right, things. Right, but the, push they, ba the pushback against economic incentives, money. financial incentives to a company like Amazon is honestly, whatever it is that you give them to lure them here is gonna be a drop in the bucket. Okay, here. that's another issue. Yeah. And, and that's why I believe the greatest strength we have yeah. is really cost of doing business here, the cost of construction, the cost of land, uh, the amount of available land, We've got so much more to offer before the incentives come Work, compared to everything else. Workforce. Workforce, it's amazing. Air, airport. 
We've got more technology employees yep. in the Dallas area than Austin by far, almost as much as Austin and Houston together, yeah. almost as much as Seattle. I was going to ask you to smack talk Austin if you no, wanted to. No, I'm not going to. Do you want to do you, do you talk crap about Austin no, while we're sitting here? No, now? no, no, I don't. So, so Austin, is you, you don't believe that you need to disable Austin as your competitor for Amazon's business? Look. I won't is, tell Adler that you is, said it. Come on, man. This is not... This is not the Olympics, okay? This is not about, we're gonna beat you, okay? This is about taking care of a customer and saying, customer, what do you like, blue, red? Do you like something that's right. slimming or do you want to have the, the So this is about there? you, this is only about you talking to Amazon. You're playing handball, not tennis, as far well, as this goes. Well, of course, it's all about if the customer's right. Right. This happens to be what we have. Is this what yeah. you might want? Do you feel the need to require anything of the businesses <coughs> that you attract to Austin? The mayor of Austin and I this morning had a conversation about affordability. Yeah, did he smack talk me? No, he did not. <laughs> I, I invited him to smack talk you, and he also declined. I was kind of bummed out about that then, too. Um, <laughs> we were talking about affordability as a topic this morning and the question of a livable wage. Federal minimum wage is seven and a quarter. The city of Austin, the county of Travis, both have a significantly higher floor for wages for public employees, but they have a limit on their ability to require private businesses to pay what they would consider we do to be the a same livable thing. wage. We do the same thing. I yeah. asked him, and I'll ask you, would you consider <clears throat> your discussions with Amazon making as a condition of a deal that Amazon pay a wage closer to what the public sector will pay in the form of a livable wage? Do you think businesses have an obligation to pay a livable wage when they come to your community? Well, the first question uh, is, Probably, yes, because I think Amazon's that type of company. I can't believe that they're going to, as I look at their workforce, yep. that's not the issue for them. They're not a minimum wage workforce, okay? There's a lot of businesses that are, so it probably would be uh, a no-brainer. You're less business. interested in attracting those kinds of businesses, minimum wage workforce businesses. Well, I, I, I would like, service uh, workers are very important. They just need to get paid. Yeah. You know, twelve, thirteen dollars an hour. Okay, they just—I mean, look. If we're ever going to get over this hump, it's not just about those people making more. It's about those people not having to work three jobs so they can take care of the kids and do the homework that they need to do right. to do in school right. and get there. Yeah. So that's why it's very, very. And the important. wage conversation—I mean, that we could spend an hour on this. The wage conversation has a direct uh, a conversation back to housing yeah, exactly. and the transportation. So many other challenges that the city has. This is all of a piece. Yeah. You would agree. Let me ask you about President Trump. Speaking of things, we, speaking of things we could talk for an hour or longer about. Um, you were part of the U.S. Conference of Mayors uh, uh, event in Washington, D.C. a couple weeks ago. It became something of a, of a political event when mayors were invited to meet uh, 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 with the White House. And a number of mayors, including a number of Texas mayors, declined to go, angry at the mayor. You chose, angry you chose, angry, angry at the president, pardon me. You chose to go. Yeah. Why? So, well, first of all, let's tell the audience exactly what happened because it's fascinating. And I think deciding not to go, I mean, Harry Loras LA uh, in, in Plano. Mayor Plano. Okay. I mean, he's Haitian and, 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 and President Trump just was terrible on, on a Haitian, uh, the, using that s-hole comment i mean just awful and so he just personally he had a problem and i think that's great right um but a number of other mayors the, who didn't what, go what had happened right. was um an hour two excuse me that's an exaggeration i think it was two and a half hours before we were supposed to leave to go the department of justice threw on subpoenas of 10 different cities for being sanctuary cities, once again. Back to that issue. And, and asked, said that they've got to d supply all this information, just through a big piece of mud. We were not in that, okay? And, um, and those mayors felt that that was, they weren't gonna go over there and, and, and be part of that. And I appreciate that, I really do. I decided, it was like real time decision making. Um, I decided to go for two reasons. One, um, that my job um, is one where I've got to build relationships with everybody, no matter what they're in office. And I try to be polite and nice to them. And, and it gives you a chance to meet some of the secretaries and undersecretaries, met the Corps of Engineers, yep. st st stuff that now I'm going to be able to do better uh, work there. And I, I felt that compromise to making a political statement, I, I didn't quite see the, the balance. So I, I did that. I went for that reason. The other reason is 
I was just really curious, okay? Yeah. Honest to God, I just, I. Had you I, not met him? No, I'd never met him. And it was like, I, it was like, really is. I, All right, so tell us, because most I, of us in this room, we've, we've not been in a room with him, go. Stretch your legs, tell so, us what he's so, like. Well, I'll just tell you what happened with me, okay? I'm not gonna try to, I mean, you know, beat up on the ugly kid, you know, I'm just not gonna do that, okay? I, 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 I just it's wouldn't nice, do that. It's nice how you say, I'm not gonna do this thing while doing that thing. <laughs> no, I, didn't. I said I'm not gonna do Did it. you think we missed that? That was actually right exactly what you thought. So keep we, going, keep going. First of all, yeah. I've been there the last many times in the East Room, it's usually packed. It's, it's a long room, but it's not as wide as this, but longer, okay? And usually people are just packed like this, okay? in the thing, and the president comes in on the, kind of the end, the, sh the short end, and makes speeches and asks questions. This happened to be flipped, and so there was only about four rows of mayors, okay, that were there. And I was sitting in the second row, and there were about three other Democratic mayors that went, okay? Detroit went, uh, Nashville went, right. and Louisville went. By what you mean, okay? not nonpartisan mayors who are out Democrats. That, 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 that are right. uh, clear Democrats. Everybody right. else is pretty Republican. And, you know, most of them were small town mayors, which is, was great for them because most of the time big city mayors kind of elbow their way out. And, and I sat next to a lady from Branson, and she was just thrilled to be in the White House and sit in the second row, okay? I mean, it was like, it was good for her, good for her. Well, he comes in, okay, in the back row, okay, from the back, and the President of the United States, everybody stands up, and it was kind of tepid applause. It wasn't like cheering or anything, but everybody's polite. And he's shaking hands all the way up. He gets right here, okay, and he shakes this man's hand there. And then he shakes this lady's hand right there, okay? And he comes up here and goes, thank you. Thank you for being here, mayors. You're my good friends. It is great uh, uh, to, to have you all here. My good friend, uh, Billy Bob McCoy. Billy Bob, where are you? And the guy goes right there. Uh, here I am, Mayor. Okay. <laughs> he had just shaken his hand. Okay. <laughs> he had just shaken in this guy's hand. And then he goes, oh, remember Mississippi? We beat him up in Mississippi, didn't we? Okay. We did that. Yes, Miss President. That was great. And then he goes, My ne next friend, Betsy Price. Where's, where's Betsy Price? Okay. It happened to Betsy was sitting there. <laughs> I felt so sorry for Betsy. It was like, here I am, Mr. President. It's like, yeah, okay, Betsy. You know, it was just like, really, either you're not briefed or you're, you have no social context of how to, it was, it was amazing. And then he did his speech and he immediately said, Democratic mayors, he did the Dan Patrick thing, are the worst thing that ever happened in the United States. And it was like, really, I'm kind of one of those and we're doing okay, but I didn't do that. I, I just set my hands and, and then he, he just did his other stuff and then said, thank you very much, and he left, all right? And then we had a little round table with not the, the most senior people, and then it was over. So it was- uh, That was the whole thing. It was not that exciting. But your theory is it's better to be in the room because being in the room allows you to be a well, better I did mayor. Meet, I did meet right. somebody. On behalf more, of your people. It was voyeuristic too, I admit. You look okay. right. <laughs> the, the question I want to ask you is, the, the, the president ran a company, he came out of the private hey, He didn't run a company. Evan. Oh, come on. <laughs> really? Evan, well, he didn't please. run Pizza Hut. Evan, he has real estate transactions where he had maybe 150 people report to him. Th that's a company. Okay, stop. Okay. It's it not was, a big company. It was, he could pull everybody together for orange juice and donuts in the morning, okay? And he went, his company, his enterprises went bankrupt time after time after time after time, right. okay? Let's just, let's just be honest, okay? Yeah. He, he was born on third base and, and thought he'd uh, hit a triple. I mean, uh, <laughs> he, he just, and I, I'm not, my point is that this is not the great manager of our time, okay? And I was hopeful he'd be a better deal maker. Okay, I really right. did. I go, okay, okay, he's a real estate guy, he knows how to do this. And it's just like... I guess I was looking for a connect between you coming out of the private sector, him coming out of the private sector. When I'm you insulted saw, by you're that. You're insulted <laughs> by that. I'm, I'm going to move on. Sorry. Uh, no, 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 we're, we're good, we're good, we're good. Um, 
before we go to the audience, I want to ask you about politics. I want to ask you about the Democratic Party and the Republican Party in Texas, because you are getting ready, as I said, you're rounding third, you're getting ready to be done with this job in a you know, little less than uh, two years. Um, you're done in politics. I am. Okay, so you can speak freely and candidly. You never have to st stand for office again. You can do your thing. I I'm uh, going to speak respectfully, too. Right. I'm not going to. Do you think that this president should be defeated in 2020? Sh should? Should be. Uh, you mean my. Would you like to see? Would you like to see somebody else be president yes. beginning in January? Yes. Yes. Right. And the reason for that is what? Um, I I don't believe America is becoming great. I think America is going the other way. Yeah. I do. And what is my metric? Okay. My metric is the self-esteem of of the body politic. Yeah. One, and two the the respect around the world of us. And I, I don't think you should do stuff for other people necessarily, but those are two important metrics that right. I don't see that happening. Right. Do you uh, have the same willingness to be candid about leadership in the state? All of Probably not. All the state leaders, <laughs> all the state leaders in Texas are up for election again this year. Will you get active in any way in political races at the state level in 2018? Um, I'm gonna let the primaries go. And since I'm on my last leg, I might, okay? Yeah. I might. I, I've got, there are a couple of folks that I think are doing a hell of a job, uh -huh. and I might for the first time. Well, I, I'm gonna make that judgment at that point. I, but I really kind of took a, a go. Doing a hell of a job. So you would, be, you would be four people who you think are doing a good job. No, I'm in hell of a job running, okay? Yeah. Okay. And um, uh, I just took an oath to try to make this job nonpartisan. I think it's a healthy one. I really do. You think the people of the city don't want you to speak out on those things? Um, no, they probably want me to. Right. That doesn't mean it's right. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have to judge that very carefully. Can I ask you before we go to the audience? Uh, I want to ask you about Lupe Valdez, mm -hmm. who is the sheriff of Dallas County, who you've served alongside mm -hmm. for the entire time that you've been mayor. She is obviously one of the two leading candidates, or is perceived to be one of the two leading candidates for governor of Texas as a Democrat. The Dallas Morning News, uh, which has the right to editorialize on any race and uh, support or oppose any candidate, I thought it was very interesting that they not only endorsed her opponent, but they talked about her lack of knowledge of state issues in pretty scathing language. Now, this is a case where the Dallas News knows Sheriff Valdez very well. They've observed her up close, and you kind of think, a random newspaper that sits with a candidate who comes before their editorial board will you decide not to support them. That's one thing. But this is a case where it felt like familiarity bred contempt. Do you want to offer a point of view about Sheriff Valdez for some people in the audience who may be thinking about this race, either in the primary or the general, should she be the nominee? Do you have a point of view about her? Well, I didn't read it as contempt, okay? I, I read it's it. Pretty harsh editorial. It was, it, it was tough. Harsh. It was tough, but yeah. I, I I think that uh, uh, Sheriff has done an admirable job in kind of dealing with uh, some tough issues. Um, uh, she's faced some of the um, um, challenges she's had, uh, I think, with, with honesty and, and, and kind of forthrightness. Um, I, I think that she is at a point in her life she wants to do something bigger and better, okay? Um, and. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if she can take that wing of the Democratic Party and, and, and rally around it. I, I see. I, I don't think that. Um, I think the Democrats are kind of a little bit lost right now and don't as a have, party as a party, and they don't have it. So it's being very personality driven. Now you just like you like Loopy or not? I like Loopy. Will okay? you support her? Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of seeing where the primary goes on this. Yeah, but and, she needs uh, you now. Yeah, I, uh, she I, won't need you if she loses. The answer, the answer to that is I'm not doing it now. No. So you are you are you are making a decision not to endorse her, even though you know her and you like her. Yes. And that's on principle, or that's about her specifically. Uh, that's on principle right now. Okay, that I'm not endorsing anybody in the uh, the uh, the primary. Okay, and you're, you're done in politics. You, I'm correct to assume that you're finished. I said that. When you are done, you, there's nothing that can lure you, because there were people, as you know, when we talked in September, it was not yet decided who the Democratic candidate for governor would be. There were people who wanted you to run for statewide office. There are people who imagine you in another role. You well, do let's not just imagine talk yourself. about this. Yeah. Let's just talk about it, because you jumped on me because you s said being a centrist is no man's land. Well, I'm and saying I think, it's and lonely I think, by these the way, days. You're it's brilliant. You're brilliant, okay? Centrist is no man's land, right. okay, in political parties. Yeah. Why would a radical centrist want to pick a losing proposition? 
because somebody has to be the first. Uh. Somebody. I'm not. I'm not the monkey on that spaceship up there. I'm not. Okay. I got a life. Okay. The Dallas News now has its headline from tonight: Rawlings. I'm not a monkey on a spaceship. <laughs> That's a pretty good headline, actually. Yeah. All, right. All right. We're going to go to questions. We've got microphones, like we say, on either side. Please, if you wouldn't mind letting yourself out of your row, come on up. We'll take them for as long as we can. The Kessler will kick us out here pretty soon, but we'll take questions for as long as we can. Ma'am, we'll go, we'll go uh, side to side, side to side. Sir, ma'am, you go first. Okay. Oh, can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes. yes. All right. My name is Queen Jay. Hi. And hi. Um, I was going to say, I have two things. You, as well as myself, I'm a legal advocate, and I definitely advocated for the universities when that all was going down about um, the sanctuary. Uh -huh. And so um, did the university presidents ever come, like in the city of Dallas, UT, uh, uh, Southwestern, UT Dallas, uh -huh. SMU, did they call on you for help to it, and stand in the alliance? Because I know I was calling on them for, yeah. to get down over they, there at they, that airport. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, they did. And um, whether it's uh, the sanctuary city issue or folks being not allowed to come into Dallas, okay? Uh, they were great. SMU, there were uh, some of those, the, the folks that w weren't getting in that, the country that night, uh, their kids were at SMU, they were coming to see them. So I, I felt the, the education system uh, really rallied around me. Okay, last question. Um, the South Sector, please help put more money in there. MLK needs a lot of doctor work. And yes. just, you know, and also I just feel like the MLK parade, can you just want to take some more influence on how the parade goes? Because we really want to <laughs> march instead of just parading in yes. those floats. I love you. You're amazing. Yes. Thank you. I, I will tell you, Southern Dallas is, grew by 250% last year, faster than North Dallas for the first time in history. And, and we are going to continue to invest. Right. Ma'am. Hi, Mr. Mayor. My name Hi. is Natalie Smith. I'm at the University of Dallas in Irving. Um, we met earlier. So as a Boston College grad, as a radical centrist, um, as uh, admittedly nonpartisan or trying to be nonpartisan mayor, I wonder if you could explain a little bit more or expand on what you meant by uh, progressing but together, progressing yeah. but not leaving anyone behind. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll background this a bit. Uh, it, it, it's hard for someone who uh, cares about tradition to full-throatedly get behind uh, someone who talks about progressing, you know? Um, yeah. So I wonder if you could explain that a little bit more. Look, I, like I believe God made every person equal, sure. okay? And with uh, a, a, a sacred uh, being. And so to me, when I see somebody that doesn't have the same opportunity as somebody else, I'm going to kind of work my ass off, I think is the term, for that person, so. okay? And uh, try to help that person get the opportunity, especially if they're six and eight years old, and mm -hmm. I see what's in front of them. So I'm gonna really uh, endorse uh, uh, those things. The other thing I'm, uh, uh, being a radical centrist makes me radically against, is people that believe the pie is only so big and it's all about carving up the pie. That's not the way history works. The key is to grow the pie, but make sure that in growing that pie, those, those other folks are there. So um, I'm, uh, I'm uh, respectful and uh, believe that whether it's sexual orientation or ethnics or, uh, uh, or where they come from a country standpoint. I, I love the United States, and I love Dallas better because it's becoming more international. So that's kind of my story, and I'll stick to it. Thank Very good. You. Ma'am. Yes, hi, good evening, uh, Mayor Rollins. Uh, again, I am Shanita Cleveland from Cedar Hill, Texas. And my question is regarding the homeless, uh, especially in the southern sector. And uh, uh, with the new bond, I believe five million was- 20. 20 million, that's even more wonderful. Uh, so what, uh, I, I hear that the council is working on a committee to figure out how they're gonna spend those dollars, you know, what types of programs they can assist so are there any homeless, actual homeless people that are part of that committee since you're trying to service them? So is, would they be allowed to be a part of that uh, committee? And I pray that 
Uh, I'm so glad that the focus is now on, uh, on South Dallas just because it needs a lot of help. If you look, it just, it looks like it's hopeless over there. So, so what, what about that? Are end users going to be part of the decision making? Yeah, they have been, by the way. I've had, uh, frankly, way too many committees talking about this. We've talked way too much and done not enough. And the homeless have been part of that discussion. Now I need to get leadership politicians. I need to get people that are in charge of that money making commitments and, and not try to split the baby, but really kind of uh, be committed behind permanent supportive housing, which has uh, mental health components in it. Yeah. That's a big issue. Good. Hi. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Uh, my name is Wes Joseph. I'm a student at Shriner from Kerrville. Good. Um, you touched on the topic of education throughout the session. Uh, what do you believe to be the solution to decreasing the achievement gap between wealthy school districts and low-income school districts? Well, I think it's great question it's it's the core issue first of all early childhood okay we have got to get those three-year-olds and four-year-olds learning and not sitting in front of a TV at a daycare center okay so that's the first thing we got to do we're making progress for four-year-olds we're not making progress for three-year-olds we got to get more state funding it's a state for responsibility it's a state responsibility but we've also got to build the capital and the infrastructure for that w one issue on that is teachers it takes four years to get somebody educated, and if we put all the three and four year olds to, in place, we wouldn't have enough teachers for those jobs. So we've got to figure out that. So that's one issue. Second is we need to pay our great teachers more, okay? And we need to. <laughs> and I believe we should pay the teachers in the toughest schools more. Even more. Okay, all right? And that, that everything, we're going to treat everybody the exact same thing is just, we know from a management struct, a management theory standpoint, it doesn't work. Does that put okay? you at odds with the teachers' unions? Of course it does. It does. It does. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and by the way, I respect them. My mother was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. My other aunt was a teacher. My third aunt was a teacher. Fourth, fifth, and sixth aunts were teachers, okay? So I'm, I love teachers. But I also want high-performing teachers because the future of young babies are, are depending on those women. So it's that. Second, third, we've got to attract more teachers, okay? We need a campaign to get people. I, I, I would wish I knew in this uh, how many people are going to become teachers as, as students. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him a hand. That's what I want. I want when, you know how we veterans come off planes and we applaud them? When teachers come off planes, I want to applaud them, okay? Because somehow we want to make teaching the most important uh, profession in America. And, and right now, it isn't. And we've got to do a better job of that. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor. Sorry. No, 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 you're doing good. You're doing good. Fine. Hi, uh, my name's Crystal Haynes. I live over in East Dallas. I'm a research and development chemist. I've read a lot about how- She's bragging now. <laughs> she did better in science than I did. <laughs> uh, I've read a lot about how Pittsburgh is a leader in research and technology. What can Dallas do to be a leader in research and technology? Well, first of all, I think continue to, to fund or hire institutions. UT Southwestern and UT Dallas were, were in a tough situation with this budget. They almost didn't get their budget, and you, you know it I do. came in the last moment. Right. That's the first and foremost thing. Got to properly we, fund higher ed. We've got to, we've got to yeah. do that. Yeah. Second is we've got to put the economic venture capital around that, okay, to spin those things off and, and, and make them um, uh, more successful. We're doing it better than we did five years ago. Austin still beats us from a venture capital standpoint. We need to get more uh, investors and in not just kind of long-term investing in Dallas, but in the short term. Got it. So we're going to take one more. I'm just be, be sure I understand that the mayor needs to go after this. Is that right? I'm sorry. We'll have one more question. Ma'am. Mayor, thank you for being here tonight. I'll do two more. I'll do, I'll do three more questions. Okay. <laughs> it's, I'll do three more questions. She's it's, doing it's, the right it's, thing. It's his call. She's I know. doing no, the no, right thing. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm not. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It takes the pressure questions. off my question, okay. so thank right. you. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Go I was wondering if you could speak towards the value of citizen engagement in the policymaking process in Dallas overall, but more specifically in your resource allocation and your budgetary process. Well, it is a, first of all, we, we love it, and we need more of it. So let me just talk, say that. But it is a tricky proposition. 
okay? Because how you do that creates po politics. And we, I don't think, I think we're still learning how to do a better job of it. In the bond election, we created committees that heard hearings and they argued and then brought it ultimately to city council. Our city manager, T.C. Broadnex, was, uh, his ex-professor is sitting right here, is a real believer in that. And we're gonna do more of that. We're doing a lot more online. We're doing a, a lot more um, uh, virtual town halls and we're, and we're doing that. So I think that's important. But I will tell you, sorry for jumping into my, uh, my fan here, okay? It is embarrassing how few people vote in this city. Okay? Well, you're, you're not gonna get any argument okay. from anybody about that. Uh, well, I just, I know, but I get to lecture now, guys. Yeah. Yeah. We are, of 50 cities, what's our number? 50th. We are the dead last on this issue. And you're in the state that is dead last in the country. We are, it's ridiculous, and young people are the worst. And the reason they say they're the worst is they were too busy. Yeah. They're do, I don't know what they're b doing, okay? <laughs> But they're too busy, they're, they're too busy, to, <laughs> that's it. they're working too many times. Now, I just said this to the Dallas Morning News yesterday. We need to do what Austin did, which is change the voting date from May to November, okay? <laughs> we need to make it easier for people to vote, not harder, okay? And we've gotta work that out in the state and several things, but you start to vote now you 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 you're starting to get engaged and, and you and become brand loyal. You then vote right. every time that's automatically. Right. That's, that's right. the default. So Good. That's what I know. Ma'am. I'm Leslie Gray, I'm from Addison. And I, this is a little bit of a follow up, but what would you say, especially to the college students, about why it's important to get involved in public service? Because well, there's lots of reasons not yeah, to, I think, I, right to now. Me, but to me it's a it's a it's a philosophical question, okay? And that is, are you going to be a person in a world by yourself, or are you going to be a person with others in this world? And it's a, I know that sounds very heady, but it fundamentally, the way that history has progressed, and it's fabulous if, if there are historians to see how the importance of government in the process it works. And this is should be part of wanting to hang with people. Now, if you're a loner and you're a nihilist, you know, I'm sorry, but you're probably not gonna be involved. But if you're engaged, this should be part of the muscle that we all learn. And I think it makes you feel better. I, I'm not gonna argue the benefit, there's a lot of benefits for the government, but I think as a human being, you feel better. Yeah. You feel more valuable. Good, okay. Um, hi, my name is Zoe Worth. I'm a scholar at Trinity University. I recently had the luxury of attending a community discussion on mental health in San Antonio, and I witnessed a discussion between two women over whether the apathy of not voting but being involved on the ground, or the apathy of voting but not being involved on the ground is worse. What do you think in, in communities is more important for people to do, be active or be a voter? Well, I think uh, if you can't vote, you shouldn't be an activist. Okay, really. If you, think you if you can't be bothered to vote, then exactly, you shouldn't be an activist. Exactly, really? You're out there I'm blogging and you're doing this and you don't take the time to vote? I don't even get that. I mean, that's, that's the ante for the poker game here, okay, to, to do it. So I don't know if that answers your question, but to me, voting, it, because it, you, you go to the poll, you have to think about it, there's an action there, and, uh, and then I love people being activists, okay? But let's make that something that we all do together. Why don't we join hands and we promise each other. That. Yeah. Um, that's, a good, that's a good upbeat uh, a place to end. And again, I'm sorry that we can't take more questions. The mayor was very generous with his time tonight. Please give him a big hand for being here. Thank you. Thank the Kessler Theater for having us and our sponsors. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I enjoyed it. That's always good. I appreciate it. Thank you.